In the first scene of the film, a man awakens in a cube-shaped room, six doors are present and luminous lines may be seen on the walls, ceiling, and floor. When the man gets his bearings, he opens two doors and discovers identical chambers with distinct hues from the one he is currently in. He opens a third door out of curiosity and goes inside. But as soon as he does, big cubes are cut out of him. As his body disintegrates, we witness a gadget with intertwined wires that sliced him into fragments. It folds up effortlessly and vanishes. Another man named Quentin enters a room confidently. They there, he discovers Worth unconscious and attempts to rouse him. Abruptly, one of the doors opens, and a reserved woman enters. Holloway, as she goes by, knows that Quentin is just as stuck as she is. They soon hear Levin, a girl, screaming from the adjacent room. She is brought into their room by Quentin, who then unintentionally breaks her glasses. The picture becomes even more mysterious at that moment, when an elderly man named Renz comes in from the upper door. As it turns out, none of them know where they are, how they got there, or why they are there. Though he nearly lost his head in one of the rooms before, Quentin is aware that there are traps there. After that, the five resolve to remain together and look for a way out. Ren sets the example by throwing a boot into a room and holding onto the laces to see if anything activates. This is how you can check for traps. He tosses a shoe inside and the place erupts in flames. Then he quickly gets the sneaker back and lets everyone know that the room has motion detectors. He issues a warning that going inside will set off the detectors, which could cause deadly burns. They can distinguish between dangerous and safe environments by throwing shoes into various rooms. While this is going on, on, Holloway explores several hypotheses as to who could have made the cube, her two primary theories are aliens or the government. The gang eventually starts to hear odd sounds coming from outside, that sound like the rumble of a big elevator. Holloway comforts herself that help will undoubtedly arrive. Conversely, Quentin and Renz propose traveling straight forward, since they think there has to be a way out. Levin gets overwhelmed by everything around her and starts to get anxious. She worries that this cube will be where they all end up. However, Quentin reassures her that they will undoubtedly leave this place. Renz then advises them to proceed proceed in a straight line till they reach the finish, because standing motionless won't help. The others begin moving around the rooms in accordance with their agreement. After tossing his sneaker into the adjoining room once more, Renz takes the group inside one by one after determining it is safe to do so. A sequence of numbers is written on the hatchways connecting each room as they pass by. Holloway surmises that there must be thousands of rooms after realizing this. They can only live for three days, she continues, because they don't have access to food or water. Renz responds by advising sucking on a button from his shirt to increase elevation and stave off thirst. Everyone gets their buttons out and starts sucking on them after taking his lead. The group keeps using the boot tactic and advances as the hours go by. Renz once launches another boot into a room but he discovers nothing worrisome. But after noticing the dry air, he deduces that the room most likely features an electrochemical sensor. It is possible that this sensor picks up skin-emitted hydrogen sulfide. The elderly man then reveals to Quentin that Renz is a French escape artist, who has successfully escaped from more than seven significant prisons, as a result of Quentin's curiosity and his experience. Not long after, he leaps into a room that had been tested with a boot, only to get acid sprayed in his face. It's too late, the others immediately yank him back. Ren's face and head are corroded by the acid causing an excruciating death. Following this encounter, the group determines that their acquaintance must have overlooked an electrochemical sensor in the room. Thus, they must devise a more efficient method of checking the rooms for traps. Quentin asks everyone what they do for a living as he goes around. He identifies himself as a police officer right away. Holloway then identifies herself as a doctor, while Worth says he works in an office but doesn't elaborate. When Levin's turn comes around, she merely says that that she likes to hang out with her friends. Quentin thinks it's not merely a coincidence that they're all in the cube for a reason. He also questions why Holloway has lost all of her jewelry, yet Levin still has her glasses. As the conversation go on, Levin abruptly admits that she is proficient in arithmetic. The others then urge her to figure out the cube's coding, thinking it's a puzzle of some sort. Levin discovers in the following scene that rooms bearing specific numbers are harmful, particularly if the number is a prime number. She provides evidence for her theory by pointing out that the acid assault room in Renz had the prime number 100 149 written on it. Using the same approach, she determines that the following chamber must be secure, because none of the numbers are prime. The other members of the group compliment her, impressed by her cunning. Then, without incident, Levin leaps into the chamber to make sure it is secure. The group uses prime numbers as a guide and keeps on for several hours. Quentin makes little flirtations with Levin during this period. He discloses some details about his personal life, including the fact that he is divorced and has three children. The group eventually encounters chambers where each door has a prime number, indicating that trap 
steps are forthcoming. After that, Quentin looks into the ceiling door. Kazan, a human, unexpectedly descends from above. He keeps asking to go to the blue room and seems to be repeating some words. Holloway concludes that he has a mental disability. In the meantime, Levin questions how he has survived up to this point. Some of the group members are reluctant to include Kazan, since they see him as a burden when they decide to press forward with their plan. But they admit Holloway into the group at his demand. Holloway and Quentin think about what could be around them and discuss potential suspects for the cube's owner. She surmises that the government most likely built this enormous structure possibly in a desert. While this is going on, Holloway thinks it funny and brushes off Quentin's theory that a millionaire may have erected it for amusement. Soon after Quentin goes into a room without prime numbers and barely avoids being killed by a razor wire trap that revolves. Levin's idea that non-prime numbered rooms are safe is refuted by this incident. Later, after they've been silent since they first met, Quentin begins to accuse Worth of being a spy. After that, the gang splits up, while Levin works to figure out the figures. After some time, Worth is duped by Quentin into confessing that he was one of the architects of the large cube-shaped building that houses the cube-shaped rooms. Worth acknowledges that he didn't know his employer, and that he was only here for the money when questioned about who hired him. Worth gives the group important information on the 434-foot-long outer cube despite the rising mistrust among them, especially from Quentin, who uses violence. Levin calculates that there are 17,576 rooms total 26 rooms on each side based on the available data. She goes on to say that the numbers separating the rooms could be Cartesian coordinates, showing where the chambers are located inside the cube. After learning this, the group chooses to move in the direction of the closest edge. They keep booting the rooms in an effort to find any threats. They discover what appears to be a secure room next to theirs in the following scene. However, just as they are ready to cross it, Kazan lets out a startling scream, setting off a few lethal traps in the room. The gang then surmises that there is a sound-activated trap system in the chamber, which could be dangerous if they walk through. Quentin advises leaving Kazan behind, since his uncontrollable outburst would prevent him from making it through. Nevertheless, Holloway persists in demanding to accompany them, and even offers to accompany Kazan around the room. Everyone eventually makes it through without incident, but Kazan accidentally sets off the trap by creating noise on Quentin's turn. Quentin almost escapes death as a result of this, he attacks Kazan out of wrath, but Holloway intervenes just in time to stop him. Then, Quentin becomes enraged with her which leads to a furious dispute between them. Holloway calls him out for having a preference for younger girls, implying that this could be the reason his wife left him. Quentin smacks her multiple times as a result of his rage over this, the others quickly separate the two, and after things settle down, they move onward. When the gang finally reaches one of the cube's side edges, they discover a space between the outer shell and the door. After that, they fashion a rope out of their garments, and Holloway boldly volunteers to swing out and explore space. But when she stays outside with the use of a homemade rope, she is only able to view total blackness below. The rope is too short for her to reach the outer cell. When she tries to swing in that direction, the cube rattles so badly as she hangs outside the room that she nearly falls into the emptiness below. Thank goodness, Quentin is able to catch her by the rope and pull her higher. However, he purposefully lets go of her hand the next second, which results in her terrible death. After the horrific event, Quentin tells the group that Holloway fell after slipping. Everyone is devastated by this, yet they are forced to move on. Following some discussion, the group decides to go down to the cube's bottom edge. But first, since they're all worn out, Levin advises that they take a short break. She is supported by the others in the group, and they all lie down on the ground. Quentin carries Levin into another room while they sleep. He makes inappropriate sexual approaches, and tries to get her to abandon the others. When she declines, he becomes combative. Luckily, Worth and Kazan find her and come to the room to save her. By this time, Quentin has developed paranoia and acknowledges that he wasn't initially confident in Holloway. The gang as a whole begins to believe that he killed her on purpose as a result. Enraged by what they said, Quentin throws Worth into the adjacent room, and strikes him viciously. Worth discovers Ren's life lifeless body there, which sends him into fits of laughing. He understands that all they've been doing for the entire time is going back and forth. Additionally, he observes that the acid room where Renz passed away is no longer in the area. The group concludes that the rooms must be moving as a result of this. Levin also notices that numbers marked in trap-filled chambers are prime powers, which are a subset of prime numbers rather than merely prime numbers. Recalling that a room's coordinate number was 27 rather than the anticipated 26, she realized that there must be a bridge room connecting it to the exit. She determines that it will travel twice before returning to its initial place, as she begins to calculate its position using the surrounding number as reference points. Levin suggests looking at all nine numbers rather than just three, and looking for main elements to assess safety, as they consider how to spot traps. For every room they enter, she must now figure out the prime factorization of three three-digit numbers. She argues that it is too complicated to calculate without a computer, despite Quentin's urging for her to do it promptly. Fortunately Kazan's true abilities 
are shown at the perfect moment, it turns out that he is an autistic genius who can complete these computations quickly. He impresses everyone by revealing the key factors of 567 in an unexpected way. They then carry on checking the room's prime factors and establish that, according to his estimates, it is secure. In order to make sure everything is secure, Quinton hurls a piece of rubble across a room. It stays intact. The party safely makes their way to the escape with Kazan's help. Worth then devises a strategy to calm Quentin, who is starting to exhibit signs of paranoia. He succeeds in luring Quentin into a chamber beneath them, abandoning him to face his destiny. Following this, the gang as a whole continues on and eventually reaches the cube's bridge room. They enter the chamber via the door and are met with an explosion of dazzling lights, but because he feels there is nothing for him in the world outside the cube, Worth determines he will not go outside. Quentin now resurfaces behind them and for some reason, manages to catch up with them. He fatally stabs Worth and sadly kills Levin by piercing her back with a broken door handle. Then he looks across at Kazan, who's trying to get out of the room. Worth, however, grabs and grips onto Quentin's leg before he can get to him. At that moment, the rooms in the small crawl space between them start to realign. Consequently, Quentin becomes trapped between, which leads to his horrifying demise. Soon later, Worth also passes away from his wounds, but at least he has spared Kazan's life. In the film's climactic sequence, Kazan emerges from the cube and observes the dazzling light, which appears to be the escape door. 